Here we are then. You've tuned in for another test time video and if you watched the one previous to this you know what's just about to get dug out of that case of test equipment and we should have a little discussion about it. Uh, we've got a cup of tea up on top of the case of test equipment at the moment. That's mine, you're not having any. Uh, I'm going to get that off of there, open up the case of test equipment and we should dig out today's video subject and have a good old talk about it. Again, it will be just a talk about it. I'm not going to be getting any test probes out or test equipment and jigging it and poking it. We'll just have a talk about it and then in another video we should do an actual demo of using that bit of kit. So first thing then, we've got to get that cup of tea off of there. That's out of here. Let me just place it down there behind me. So it's not going to get knocked or kicked there, so everything's tickety-boo. Let's open up the case then and get that bit of kit out of there which we're going to be discussing in today's test time video. There it is. Let me just close the case up. It keeps everything nice and neat and orderly then. So, what could that be? Well, it's got that on it. There we are. I'm just centering everything up. Lower the camera down just a smidge. And there we go. The camera's in its own shadow now. Alright, a little bit of zoom for you. And what we got is a calibration check box. Now let me get all that stuff off the screen so that I can see it, you can see it, and everyone else can see it. There we are. So, what is this and what do we use it for? What are those buttons on the front of it? Well, those are not buttons, those are test probe holes. What this is used for is that box that you see there is normally sent off for calibration purposes. And they will then figure out that these values are wrote on the front of it are within a certain tolerance. And they will calibrate it and check it and test it and all that lot. Write out a bit of paperwork and return that bit of paperwork with the box of tricks. Saying that, uh, you know, it's in tolerance, everything's tickety-boo. And these are the actual measurements that we got from here, 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 here. And all of those ones over the other side there. And then... Uh, you know that uh, when you test up on a particular value that it's within what it says on on here okay so there's two sides to this box the left hand side that's these four uh, these are used for just low measurements and it says continuity here and then on this side you've got this white one green one yellow one red one and blue one these ones are used for something called insulation, okay, or insulation resistance tester. You can use these on just a standard continuity tester if the range goes up to that much. Let's say, for example, that yellow one it says 10 mega ohms on that. And if you've got a tester which can go up to 10 mega ohms, then you can put just a continuity voltage in there. And uh, yeah, you know, you'll test a bit of test equipment would say you know within a certain tolerance that it's measuring 10 mega ohms and you would use this to cross check your bit of test equipment okay which on the, the odd occasion here and there is kind of important because you test leads they can build up a resistance over time and if you when you're doing a test forget to zero the leads every time and then all of a sudden during your test you'll start doubting whether it's a bit of uh, you know, a bit of electrical equipment you're testing, or whether it's your actual test equipment which is faulty. That is where that box comes into play, because you can take away the test subjects, bring that in, connect up your bit of uh, test equipment to it, your digital multimeter or your insulation resistance tester or whatnot. Choose the appropriate setting, choose one of the holes on here, 
push the test button and you'll get a certain number coming back. And like I say, as an example, if you chose that yellow one over here, 10 mega ohms, and the test result come back within, you know, very close to that, you'll know that your bit of test equipment's working okay, and you wiggle the wires around just to make sure that the number remains pretty stable, and if it starts fluctuating all over the place, you know that your test leads are faulty. Okay, that is what this bit of test equipment, uh, you know, verification bit of kit allows you to do. That is what this is. Okay, this is... Bit of a difference, I think, between test equipment, that being a continuity tester, insulation resistance tester, digital multimeter, and things like that, and this, which is used to verify the correct operation of those other bits of equipment, like the digital multimeter, insulation resistance tester, continuity checker, and all of that. And there we go. Okay, because most of the time when you're uh, getting out a bit of test equipment, one of the things you really should do each and every time is to test the tester. Okay, and then if you're, you know, you're happy with what, you know, you're getting certain numbers coming back and all of that lot, then you know that the bit of equipment is working, it's safe to use, and all of that lot. That is particularly important if you're checking for voltage. Okay, you need to know that a bit of equipment is going to actually draw that voltage in and show it on the display. And, uh... Yeah, if you're trying to verify that something is de-energised and that equipment's faulty, what can happen is, when you put the test probes in, if they're faulty, uh, the bit of test equipment says, obviously speaking because it's faulty, it says there's no voltage there, when in fact there is. And when you go in there, you actually didn't get a, you know electric shock up your arm because a bit of test equipment's faulty. And this is what I'm saying. Every time you use a bit of test equipment, especially when verifying for voltage, you should check it every time. That bit of equipment, uh, just verification bit of equipment, will allow you to do that. Okay. Now, like I say, we're not going to be getting any test equipment out and using this and poking it and jigging it and all that lot. But I will give you a quick, very quick brief talking over how you use it. Okay, now you've got a black central uh, little probe hole on there. Now, regardless of the test you're going to carry out, you connect one of the test probes into that central black hole right in the middle here, okay, because that is where you either put the test current in or take it out. It doesn't matter which direction it goes. And then, depending on which hole you choose surrounding that, that would then determine what test result you get come back. Okay, so let's say, for example, we're just doing a, you know, a very low continuity test, and we choose this yellow one over here, which is one ohm. That's all. It's just one single ohm on that yellow one. Okay. So you turn your uh, continuity tester to, you know, whole ohms and whatnot. Put one probe in the central one there, and then connect the other probe onto the yellow one, and you should get you know, hopefully somewhere around about very close to one ohm showing up on your bit of test equipment. Of course, if you're only getting half an ohm or three ohms or something like that, that's obviously way out, something's not quite right. And uh, then you should then question the bit of test equipment. Okay, obviously speaking, what you see there up in front of the camera should be checked every so often, you know, calibrated and whatnot. And uh, so that you know that this is working correctly, and if there are any suspicions or doubts that are coming up, it is actually the bit of test equipment you're connecting into that, and not that box itself which is at fault. So there we go. That's what that's used for. Like I say, we've got continuity down this side, that's these. Just low ohm resistance readings. We've got half an ohm, one ohm, two ohms, and then ten ohms. Okay, and then these ones over here are in the mega ohms range. And in case you don't know, uh, one uh, one mega ohm is a million ohms. Okay, so down the bottom there, then we got half a mega ohm. That would be five hundred thousand ohms. Then we got two mega ohms. That's two million ohms. Ten mega ohms. Ten million ohms. 20 mega ohms, 20 million ohms of course, and right up the top here, if you've got a bit of test equipment which goes up that far, and I don't think I have, 
Uh, that's 50 mega ohms or 50 million ohms. Okay, and uh, yeah, these ones down here, you generally use those for an insulation resistance tester. As an example, my insulation resistance tester can go up to uh, 200 mega ohms, uh, I believe, something like that. And so, therefore, we've got a variety of options there to choose from. So I could say, for example, connect into the central one and connect on there. And if it comes back somewhere around about there, you know, it might be like 9.95 mega ohms. I think, yeah, you know, that's in the ballpark, so that, that's okay. And maybe 10.1 mega ohms, so again, it'll be okay. Or it could be bang on 10 mega ohms, it shows on the display of the test equipment. And I think, yeah, you know, my bit of the test equipment's working okay. And all the time I've got that connected in there, I wiggle the wires around just to make sure I've got a good solid connection. And that is what that's for. So we've had a little discussion then about the calibration checkbox. Okay, it's a verification bit of kit. Just to make sure your test equipment's working properly. And like I say, every so often you'd send it off for calibration just to make sure that this is okay. So that if at any time there is a doubt that comes up, the doubt will be thrown in the direction of the bit of test equipment and not that box. So I'm going to put that back in the case of test equipment now. I'm going to dig out the old wiggly finger, wave it around, and when it stops, uh, as a little end teaser, uh, that bit of test equipment that the finger stops on will be discussed in the next video on another day. Okay, let's put that back where that lives then. There it is. Let's pick up the camera. I've got the wiggly finger ready. And let's get into it. Wiggly finger. Stop. Okay, this is it here. This orange thing. We're going to be discussing this in the next video on another day. So if you haven't yet... Press that subscribe button, then by all means do so. Do give it, make sure you really give it a good solid pressing, and make sure you're subscribed to see that video for this. Okay, if you can spare one, big old thumb up will be much appreciated. So I know you enjoyed the video on that calibration checkbox, and of course, now that you are subscribed, you'll see that orange thing there in the next video on another day. So, yes. I would like to say thanks for tuning in for watching another Test Time video on Wayne's Electrical. It is in full HD, of course, don't forget. 1920 by 1080p, as like all the other videos are on Wayne's Electrical. And yes, so I'm out of here then. Cheers for watching this one.